Uh, our senior project is dedicated to the veterans. Uh, we thought it was important because a lot of people don't know what goes through their heads after they get sent to war. And we also help uh, raise a little bit of money to help support the troops. Okay, so yeah, we basically just explained what we did. We gathered bottles and cans and a little amount of money that we could. And we are still in the process of donating it. We have not donated it yet. And we think it's a really good idea to give back to them because you know, not very many people do. We always say how um, we appreciate them, but um, we just never do anything for them. Uh, we feel it's important because what they go through is really life changing. You know, things like happen, like they start to develop like disorders. And here's some disorders that may occur, like post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, bipolar disorder, and substance abuse disorder. All right, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, by show of hands, who's stressed out about presenting? Either tomorrow or next week, show of hands. All right. So imagine PTSD as in you're like three times more stressed out and you go into this mode of fire play. You either don't show up or you just stand here and you can't talk or anything. You just freeze right up. PTSD is like an anxiety. So when you go to war and if one of your friend dies and you see that, it's heartbreaking for you. And you just go into that freeze up stage and you can't do anything about it. And about 60% of the veterans have it when they come back. So if we could just maybe go online, go out on Skype or anything you guys use for messaging or anything and just talk to them, it relieves their stress a little bit, okay? So they're not just sitting home, just isolated, thinking about it constantly, because you know, when you go to war, you're gonna have memories and flashbacks and all that. I know Brett Shaheen right now, he's going to the Marines, right? Yeah. yeah, you're gonna have flashbacks about that all the time. So, and with that, I'm gonna tell you a little story today. It's something I read online with researching about this. There was this woman who had a tour in Iraq and she was there for about four or so years. I don't know what branch she was in, but she went, after her branch was over, or after her tour was over, she went to, out to eat with uh, her family and just a friendly stay. With that, out, she, sat, she had a, like, a window seat and out the window was a raping fellow. And she got so worked up about just seeing an Arabic, a Muslim or whatever, a raping person, she got so worked up about him, she was sitting there in cold sweats and she couldn't do anything. And he wasn't doing anything. I'm not saying it was racism. It's just because what she saw in Iraq and all that, she thought that's how it was. But she had to actually leave the restaurant because of that. Because she froze up so bad and she went into this fight or flight stage. It was just, just the things that happen when you go there and the disorders and mental disorders that you have from that. And you also get depression. I mean, when you see your best friend die right in front of you, that's not going to leave an easy toll. That's going to be your life. Those guys that you go with are your brothers. From the time you start to the time you finish, or the time they finish. So, you're going to have depression, no matter what. 60% of the veterans have the PTSD, and you're going to have depression too. So you got to remember, if you are going to war, you're going to have that shock on you, no matter what. I'm not saying you're going to come out with it, but you're going to come out with something. If you go in, if you don't go in crazy, you're going to come out crazy is what I'm saying. And with that, yeah. Okay, so bipolar disorder. Um, there's like highs and lows to it. It changes up frequently. Uh, mania is like the high. You feel really euphoric. Um, the, like your optimism is pretty heightened. But sometimes it gets to the point where it gets really irritating, and you, it just really bothers you. Um, we, Caleb just uh, explained depression. You know, there's like a, 
a lack of a pleasure in the activities you do. You are sad quite a bit of the time, and you don't have like a very big appetite. And uh, with this disorder, disorder, usually depression is more prevalent than mania. Mania is usually for a couple of days, and then depression can last months or years. 32% um, of veterans are stricken with this disorder. 40% go undiagnosed or, or don't receive treatment. I mean, alcohol is usually the way they try to numb themselves. And these statistics are from veterans that usually return to low-income big cities like New York and probably Detroit. All right, with that, with having all these disorders and that, it's gonna be hard to like, just keep a stable job. Because you go in and you give up everything to fight for your country. You give up everything to help your friend that's next to you to anything. You give up everything. And then you come back, you're gonna have nothing unless you have maybe family and you get off easy that way. But if you come back and you're like a 40 year old man, no parents, nothing, you're going to come back and you're probably going to be homeless. With the, you can't keep a stable job and our veterans, when you're in the war, you don't make stable money. You don't make like a lot of money. You make about 20 to 30K a year starting out. And that's all right, fine. That's not enough to keep a stable house. It's not enough. And if you have depression or if you have the substance abuse, then you're probably going to be chalking that eye, and that's going to be a lot of money. Because if you go to the bar for shots, it's like, I don't even know how much, but it's probably going to be like five bucks for shots or whatever. And you do that daily, that adds up quickly, all right? So with all that, you're going to chalk that on, plus you're going to chalk on probably your car, and going all over to find a job. And say, say you do get a job, all right? Say you do get one, and you have this wicked flashback in the middle of work, and you go to fight or flight stage, and you accidentally punch the customer in the face. Say that happens, okay? Because it's been known to happen before. Then you lose your job anyway, and you're on the street again. And you lose your house, you lose everything again. So if we could just recycle our pop bottles, I, I don't know what your financial areas are. Maybe you rely on pop bottles or anything. Talking to everybody, I don't know your financial status, but if you could just recycle or do anything just to help the veterans out, give them a dollar. Maybe give them like, since in case of substance abuse, since they're still using it, go buy them like some chips or anything just to get them through the night. I mean, that one dollar or anything could help them buy, save up for their new suit so they can go apply for that other job that they don't mind. So they can shave and get all that dirty scrub off so they're not so bad, so that other guy doesn't get the job, so the guy that really needs it gets the job. Uh, you can donate to different places, like there's a department in Michigan for donating. Uh, if you have any friends, you can just donate to them too. And uh, Bowden Island Park is actually a little uh, uh, booth at the uh, memorial place that you can actually throw in like a couple cents if you want to donate there too. Um, you can use this to talk to any veterans if you desire to. Maybe if you think you can help or talk them down from possibly committing suicide. Or maybe you just have a friend or family member that you want to talk to that could possibly be in this program. Uh, what you can do to help. Uh, you can volunteer time through the VA. Um, maybe just like listening to people's war stories, you know, let them get their, all the stuff that they have put inside out would probably really help them. And volunteering time at the shelter would really help too. sources that we use to get our information.
Hang tight for just a moment, please. Mm -hmm. 